Another Forest game, another week, another corrupt referee. Welcome to my match reaction for Forest nil, Liverpool 1. Good morning, good evening or good night. I hope you guys are doing well and were able to get some sleep after yesterday's shenanigans at the city ground. Coming up in today's video, we're going to be talking about the corruption of the Premier League. We have to. We'll get out of the way first and then we can talk about Forest, the more important stuff on the pitch. We'll be talking about finishing. We'll be talking about clearances. And we'll be talking about Forest are actually good. I still stand by that statement. If you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you're new. We'll have a glum, gl glumpy, a grumpy old Reds tonight from about 7.30, so make sure you tune in for that. <clears throat> and also, look at this new Forest ball that you can put together with the bricks from FOCO. It's pretty cool. You can pre-order them now. Use code FFTV10 in the link pinned in the comments if you want to grab hold of that. <coughs> Sorry, I need to clear my throat. I need to clear my throat. Okay, all done. Okay, let's get into this. But before we do, also don't forget that you can catch up on all our stuff on Spotify and iTunes. Please, if you do use those apps, go check out Forest Fan TV. Leave us a five-star review. All right, enough enough ad talk. Let's just get on and talk about corruption. I'm I'm sick of it. It's you know what it is at the moment for me. Even when I feel that Forest are on for a stonewall penalty and the ref hasn't given it on field, I just think there's a voice in the back of my head and it's like it's not going to happen. They're not going to give it. And you're like, "Yeah, but it's blatant. He just took a chainsaw out and cut his legs off. If that's not going to be a pen, what is?" And over the weeks, that's kind of just worn me down. And yesterday, and I'm so in a way happy that I didn't actually see the incident or I wasn't fully concentrating because I was crapping myself towards the end of that match. That I didn't see it live because this channel will probably been banned if the things I had to say there. At least I've had time to kind of sleep on it and think about it. But there is definitely a big six bias. 100%. We saw it against Varchester United on Wednesday. Fast forward a couple of days later, we see it against Liverpool. That tyranny performance was unforgivable. It's unforgivable that a referee doesn't know the rules of football. They should know them inside out. It wasn't like it wasn't like it was like a controversial one or something like that. It's a head injury one. He blew the whistle when the ball was at our feet outside of the penalty box. The ball should go to Forest. And yes, you can say clearances, etc. We'll talk about that in a bit. But it's these little things that are starting to frustrate me. And it's the rub of the green that's not going far away. Look, you may not want to call it corruption. Maybe you want to call it rub of the green. But I'm sorry. There is no way in hell that would have stood the other way around if it did happen. And we went and scored um, against Liverpool in the last second. And it's what's next. I said it and I asked you guys on the call in. By the way, if you haven't checked the phone in from last night, go check it out. Some cracking callers on there. Thank you to everyone who joined. But I said it, what's the point in Klattenberg? And this is my thing. It's not going to gain us any points. We're not going to get any matches replayed. We're not going to be able to, you know, gain any kind of advantage. For me, I think maybe they're looking at it thinking, who do you think you are, Forrest? One of our own turning them against us, we'll keep scamming you even more. But I don't want to say any more about corruption. We'll save it for grumpy old reds. I know the boys have got some views on it. But what do you guys think, man? Is, is this a vendetta against Forrest? Is it a vendetta against the other 14? Should the big six just piss off and create that stupid Super League that we're going to do so we can all get back just enjoying proper matches of football? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, I do want to talk about the game. Because what we should be talking about is how well Forrest played. We should be talking about the chances we created. And then we should be kind of nitpicking away at where Forrest could improve. And that's what I want to do now. Because we played well. We're creating those chances. But God damn it, can we not finish sometimes? And one of the callers said it yesterday. Either we're really good attacking and crap defending. Or really good at defending and look like we can't finish when we're creating those chances up front. And that's the frustrating bit. 
And I've been calling Alanga frustratingly good all season. I've dropped the good bit right now. He's just frustrating me. He's got no football IQ whatsoever. And he needs composure in front of goal. I've watched that chance. Look, some people are saying it's offside, some aren't. It doesn't matter. What you've got to be saying to yourself is that Alanga was playing as if he was onside. And he was in, it's not like a flag or a whistle blew. He had to finish that chance. And that just showed the lack of composure. You got then his second chance in the second half. You got Morgan Gibbs White's chance, which was a poor effort. You got Taiwo's chance that he absolutely fluffed his line on. And then Callum hudson Adoys was probably the hardest, but his shot wasn't clinical enough. We created enough chances. I, I agree with what Crypto said yesterday to win the actual game. Because the game was on a knife edge, it could have swayed either way. But when you're playing the likes of Liverpool, City, Arsenal, whoever it is, they will only offer you a handful of chances. And this is the difference between winning, losing or drawing. You have to find the back of the net, come hell or high water. And we just weren't able to do that. Now, the performance fills me with confidence going forward. Forest have got some games that... That I think we can win. I mean, you just don't know anymore. You just don't know anymore when it comes to Forest. What's next? You know, will we lose to Luton, but we end up going on a run of six games or beat Brighton or what have you. But the performances are good at the moment. And I think, and I stand by this, that Forest are in a false position. We're 17th in the league, but we are playing like a team who should be having a mixed bag of results. A couple of wins, the odd loss, a couple of draws. We should be and are playing like a mid-table team. The problem is at the moment, we're not getting those Ws on the board. And I think I will feel a lot more at ease if Forrest can win one of their next games and put that seven-point gap to Luton. And then I've been saying it all week, then we just need to match or better them. And then that gap will probably grow. Luton, for me, look like they're starting to run out of gas. They put a good, you know, plucky performance in against Villa yesterday. And were able to come back in and then blow it late for them. But it just feels, if you look at their track record, they're not going to be able to win six, seven games. Forest have the ability to do that. We've still got to play Sheffield. We've still got to play Burnley. We've got two potential winnable games there. And then we've got the likes of Palace at home. We've got uh, Fulham at home, potentially, although they're starting to turn their form around. There's some games there that are going to be crucial wins. But we are good. And I just think we just need a little bit of patience. I'm getting impatient myself. But we will do a video later in the week where we're going to break down the, the route to survival, if you like. There are a lot of avenues that Forrest can come out comfortably from this. I don't think it's going to be comfortable. But let's see how that plays out. What do you guys think? Are you worried we're going down? Or do you think we can turn it around? Let me know down below. Okay, let's move on to the next point I want to talk about. And it's about Nuno. Now, as you guys all know, I'm one of his biggest fans. But does that make him... Um, you know, above criticism, etc. No is the answer. But what I'm hoping of Nuno is that he's going to start learning from some of the mistakes he's making. This Alanga experiment that we saw under Steve Cooper, where he put him up front as a false nine, didn't work then. It's not working now. I mean, in a way, I'm going to contradict myself here. It could have worked if Alanga had finished. But at the end of the day, we lost and it didn't work. It's his subs, though, that I want to talk about. I don't, I thought when he first came in, in the first three to four matches, his subs were on point at the right time and the correct decisions. Lately, it just feels like, it's almost sometimes like for like players, um, or it's a slight change in the shape, because like yesterday he brought on Taiwo for um, uh, for Divock Origi, and I thought Divock Origi was playing well. For me, what I would have liked to have seen him do would have been take off Alanga, put Taiwa up front and leave Origi out on the right. Now we all know there's probably fitness issues and what have you. There's all kind of those heart monitor things they wear and it's all done on paper now, not feel. But it, it was just too late and there was only two subs. And I just felt he didn't react yesterday very well when Klopp brought on the likes of Slobosly and Endo. Because you, you know from the quality of the players that came on that they would start to run the midfield. And midfield before then, where the fight was quite balanced in what was happening. 
And I think he should have potentially, potentially gone for a third midfielder. Be that Danilo coming in, be that Sangare coming in, etc. But he needed to win that midfield battle. And I just felt slowly but surely towards the end of that second half, Forrest were getting penned in. And you literally had Virgil as their anchor, pretty much playing in our own half. And then Kanate they were using as the ball distributor left and right. But it's the subs in general. He's got to go back to how he was doing the subs in the first three to five games. He was on point and getting it right. And I just feel lately over the last couple of games, he's been wrong. We've spoken about Taiwo playing 90 minutes against Man United. That one still baffles me because it meant he wasn't fit enough to start this game. I, I don't know. I don't know. It just needs to go back to being correct. But I still think Nuno is going to get this right. I can still see his vision what he wants to do. We've got Chris Wood coming back. Sangare finally back on the bench. Bolly's not far off either. The issue we've got is with our two left backs, Einar and obviously Tavares. So there is still some injury concerns, but the squad should be getting stronger over the next week or two as well. And that's going to be important. But Nuno needs to go back to what he was doing at the start when we got those wins against Newcastle and we got it against Manchester United needs to go back to that and outclassing and outthinking the opponent manager. But I'm firmly behind Nuno. I can firmly see that he's going to get this right. Few people saying he's under pressure. I'm not buying it. As I would say with a new manager, especially a respected manager like Nuno, he's, he's picking up a mess, a complete mess on and off the pitch. He's going to need at least until the summer to sort it out and clear all the crap out both off the pitch, on the pitch, etc. So still a lot of change. For me, if Forrest can survive the season, honestly, and this isn't the happy clapper juice talking, I can see Forrest kicking on next season. These next three months are probably the most important for Forrest's history, go future, should I say, going forward for the next four to five years. If we survive, we could turn ourselves into a really good established Premier League team. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you think if we can survive, the route is good for Forest? Or am I just high on happy clapper juice? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget, we got Grumpy Old Reds coming at 7:30. Go check out all the licensed Forest gifts that you can get yourself or your loved ones or your kids or whatever over on Foka. I really like the look of this ball. And please do follow and support us if you're on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. Just search for Forest Fan TV and give us a five-star review. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you at 7.30. Come on, you Reds.